All right, so probably you're just gonna wanna start by getting the ZVS driver and the flyback transformer connected and uh, wired up correctly. So once you've got this guy done, you get your flyback transformer and it's 10 turns center tapped, which means you go five turns, pull out some slack, and then you do five more turns in the same direction and then you solder, you put those wires together where you pulled the slack out, and those are your center tap. That probably just sounds totally retarded. <clears throat> then we're going to get to the spark gap, and I like to use these elbow brackets because they're easy to attach stuff to. So one end of the spark gap is going to go to one end of the flyback transformer. And then the other end of the spark gap goes to the other end of the flyback transformer. And uh, also be careful, you probably shouldn't touch it like that. But I know this is totally dead because the capacitors aren't even plugged in. Um, but yeah, you want to stay away from that when it's running and after it's been run. Alright, <clears throat> and so I've got the secondary and primary laid down here. And um, you can see this end of the capacitor bank goes right there. And then this connection here goes to the other end of the, the spark gap here. <clears throat> and so you can see the connection that's hanging down is part of the part of the uh, secondary here. Alright and then so I've got a fan here in this PVC pipe that blows on the spark gap. It helps it stay cooler and run better. I've got terminal blocks here where I power it with a battery. And then um, here's the ZVS driver. And I've added two 40 picofarad 15 kV capacitors to hopefully protect my power supply, which I'm going to be using to power this thing. Here's how to wire the capacitors. You probably can't see very well here because I covered it in glue, which I don't recommend you do because when a connection breaks, it's a real pain in the ass to solder them when they're once uh, it's covered in glue. So resolder a broken connection when it's covered in glue. Um, but my thinking was is I would prevent any like corona buildup or anything, but prevent stuff from arcing. But it didn't seem to make any difference. Not that I had a, that problem anyway. But yeah, I just put all 11 of them on a little piece of cardboard so that way they're easy to work with and then once I got them all soldered I glued the cardboard piece itself to the bottom of the top part of the Tesla coil here. Yeah, so it's just 11 of them in series. So one end the end of this one is connected to that, and the end of this one is connected to that, and here to here, 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 and so on. And also each one, you can tell by these ones here, each one has a resistor. You shouldn't, each one has its own resistor too. As, uh, Done in the picture here. So see, there's ten in the picture. Also, the bottom of the secondary is connected to this wire here, which is my grounding wire, and it should really be insulated, probably with some of this type of stuff. This is. 3 16 inner diameter fish fish airline tubing you can get like 25 feet for like five or ten bucks definitely I'm not sure what its voltage rating is but it seems to work really well um, all right. so I have it set like this to show where the connections go 
So even though you can kind of see where the stuff's supposed to go, I'm going to use this alligator clip to show you. That goes there. And then this goes there. Hopefully I didn't that's stupid. Hopefully I didn't mess that up. Alright, see this goes to one side of the spark gap. And then this goes to the other. Alright, I'm about ready to fire this thing up. I'm gonna be using my smart power supply here. Ideally, you'd want to use a dumb power supply with a rectifier and your own capacitors with a variac and a, and a transformer, but I just don't have a proper transformer and I don't want to pull like 10 plus amps on like 25 volts. It just seems like a lot to pull, a lot of amps to pull at that low voltage for the variac. It would be too hard on it. So I'm using the dumb smart power supply. I've got some protection here and here, and a little bit on the ZVS driver too. Alright, so I've just got this wire hooking up here. That's the top of the of the secondary. And I found that a larger ball than it comes with works best. This is a uh, I think it's 100 millimeters, and I will I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, I've just got some stuff ready to go here. Got my battery. Let's plug in the battery for the fan. Okay. Fan didn't sound like it was doing well. <laughs> All right. What the hell? Maybe my clip was bad. Well, we'll see. It'll be fine. All right, I'm just gonna do the thing. Do the damn thing. All right, so I'm gonna turn this just all the way up, YOLO. Okay, there we go, max current, max volts. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn it on with this PVC pipe. It'll be fine. There we go, it loud as fucking scary. Jesus Christ, that thing's scary. <laughs> Are we still recording? Okay, yeah. That's scarier, that scares me more than my vacuum tube coil scares me. I'm gonna do it again with less lights, because it looks really, really awesome. Um, bear with me here. All right, I'm using the stick. Oh yeah, one more time we'll look at the we'll look at the power consumption here. Right on. Man, the ozone smell is just super strong up in here. We'll just try one more thing now. Okay, it's off. I'm gonna add this lamp piece. Add a little more capacitance to the to, 
the top part. This may be bigger. We'll see what happens here. Right on. <laughs> My switch sparked there.